So my name is Matt. I am the prospecting geologist, and this is my buddy Nick. Uh, I am a geologist by trade. I went to school for geology at Slippery Rock University. Um, I've worked in geotechnical engineering as well as mineral exploration for the past seven or eight, ten years, pretty much. Um, so, and I've prospected for the past 10 years as well, including panning, sluicing, dredging, metal detecting, a little bit of hard rock, all that type of stuff. Uh, and then, so Nick, what's your background? Uh, my background is I'm a badass Marine that drinks and knows things. I, I have done a little bit of prospecting and I'm really super phenomenal at it. And by phenomenal, I mean... I sometimes find gold. Uh, I do dredging with Matt, and he's taken me all over the country now at this point, technically. On, on some follies. Follies, yes, follies. That's the yes. word we'll go with. Folly. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We'll cut the rest out. I yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, used to be a, a teacher for 12 years, and I quit to go prospecting and still waiting to hit that pay streak. So, yeah, Nick brings in a thing basically where he'll pick up on things that I necessarily gloss over or don't think about. Like words. Like words. And he's also probably better at teaching than I am, too, since he was a probably. <laughs> but, okay, let's uh, dive into this episode here. This is episode two of America's Backyard Gold. Ooh. We'll see how this one goes. We had to needlessly say Jerry rig up this setup a little bit <laughs> for various reasons. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, so let's take a look at it. This is America's Backyard Gold, Episode 2, Gold in them Georgia Hills, where we just were. Try hitting the space bar, Matt. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. This is country engineering right there. At its best. When you can take a uh, lawnmower and use the back wheels, the clutch, and the shifter. Now that's pretty good engineering right there. Now, Matt, <laughs> you're over here, No, you're worried about our water heater looking like crap. And this guy's got like half a lawnmower running the setup. That's a beautiful looking trommel. Like he's he's <laughs> knocking on it a bit, but literally at the beginning of Gold Rush and all those shows when they were in Ala in Haynes, Alaska, and all that, all their stuff was homemade with stuff like this. It looked it was bigger, but it looked identical. So like knocking on it, like there are if you watch a bunch of the other gold shows, not just Gold Rush. Um, I think there's a National Geographic one, I think. I can't remember the name, but like it's home built equipment. One of them is a trommel mounted to crawler tracks so it can crawl along with them as they dig and stuff. Like, That's awesome. <laughs> I know. So, like, they you know it's it, like whatever. It's this is one thing that miners do is we usually build our own shit. Well, but how how much would a, a trommel with a Man, yeah. like a, a company made wheel that size trommel to have it built by somebody by like heckler manufacturing who makes trommels is probably ten to sixteen thousand dollars and how much is his backyard janky rig i mean i could build one i mean they're like the scrap how, yard. how much ingenuity you got yeah how much scrap yard deal and how much stuff can you scrounge yeah i mean so. Yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> I can see why he's picking on it. Like my uh, my camper trailer works perfectly fine for what it is, but, but it's it not, is not a Newman. Pretty. It is not pretty at all. It's not a Newman. It is yeah, it's not Newmar. I think it was it's yeah. Newmar Newman. I'm pretty sure it's Newmar. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's. I do not have a two million dollar camper. I have a. $2,500 camper. <laughs> tree fitty. But it's got... It, ain't gonna pay no tree fitty. Uh, but, I mean, I got a mini fridge in there. And it runs on solar, so whatever. And an air conditioner. Yeah. So yeah. suck it, Trebek. Pretty much. Hold on now. What the hell is that? It's cold there, boys. 
Is that gold? Oh, wow. Is that gold I sitting in that rock? <laughs> Holy cow, I've never seen a piece of gold like that before. <laughs> right on, man. That's my first Georgia gold. Gold is everywhere. Oh, my God. There's an estimated $3 trillion still undiscovered. Lucky as shit to find a piece like that right off the bat, because those are exceedingly rare anywhere. Now, are you just talking any kind of specimen piece? Any type of specimen piece where you're seeing gold like that in a chunk of matrix rock. Super rare. Because one, the fact that it even got caught in that sluice is mm. amazing because there's so much rock to so much gold that it's very easy for that type of stuff to just get blown right out the sluice. Okay, I yeah. don't like thinking about how many specimen pieces of gold my dredge has probably lost, considering some of the ones that we've found in that one particular location. Yeah. But there's, well, like, nothing you can do about it, because if there's just too much quartz, you're gone. Well, and I don't know if you remember, because this is probably, like, three or four years ago at this point, but I remember I found uh, in the, the dredge sluice... It was just a regular rock, and I thought it was a specimen piece because it had one little flake of gold, not even a flake, a speck of gold on it. And it ended up being it was just stuck to the mud on the rock. That happens too, yeah. And somehow I just caught it. <laughs> yeah, that happens. But no, that's, that's a super rare find regardless of where you are, whether it's East Coast, West Coast, any of that. Specimen piece is super rare. Yep. We're in America, Woo! and I want to help you choose your weapon. Find it. California gold, baby. Oh. All you need is basic equipment. You can get started with fifteen dollars and the skill to decode the land. That's a spot right there. Oh. I'm Dave Turn. For the past fourteen years, I've mined millions of dollars of gold. Oh, yeah. And now I want to show you where. And how? I've seen it all now, vacuum cleaner. Everyday people are catching it. That's insane. So that you can be the next one to hit it big. Boom, baby! Right here in America's backyard. <laughs> Gold is the foundation of America. And the opportunity to find it is just as real now as it was in the 1800s. You know, most people don't realize that there's gold out there. Anybody that's sitting on their couch at home watching TV or something, they can get up and go find gold. There's a new gold rush well, happening around the country. And, I mean, you think about that in Virginia, like whenever people come floating down the rivers and they ask what we're doing, we tell them, they're like, there's gold here? Oh, I know. It's I'm amazed at the number of people who literally – have a gold mine on their property and you call or knock on their door and start talking and they're like what <laughs> like nah i didn't know there was gonna be gold there they're nah it's all mined out all that type of stuff like mm, no it's not it's definitely not no it's great uh, but but it's also not everywhere no is it I'm is it in my yard probably not okay but there's your i mean there's quartz in your yard there is but you're a decent ways outside of the gold pyrite belt. So, uh, so small, small that. chance. Okay. Yeah. So I'm pretty much going to get rich. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, you should definitely just dig to China in your yard right now. <laughs> and everyday people like you are finding enough to help pay the bills and take those big vacations. I'm excited. <laughs> take those big vacations. To go what mine for vacation? gold. <laughs> Our vacations are to go mine for gold, basically. That's what we're doing for a vacation. Yeah. And it hasn't paid for itself yet. Eh. Uh, uh, Memorial weekend kind of trips they do. That certainly did, yeah. Yeah. James, uh, J James uh, County, uh, Idaho. James River. I don't care if you say James River. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> the the Mississippi, Alabama, Mississippi. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but but oh well. Yep. I can go out here and, you know, experience Gold Rush 2.0. Gold is yours for the taking. You just need to know where to look. And the laws. Hey! And would you be shocked to know you could even find gold here in the Deep South? 
right now I'm in Lumpkin County in the state of Georgia, right in the town of Dahlonega, and I've already found gold. Oh, Just 90 we've been there. Atlanta is the town of Dahlonega, home of America's forgotten gold rush. Is he going to the museum? Uplands of North huh? I said, is he going to the museum? Probably he'll go to the museum, I bet, yeah. I mean, he'd have to, right? Yup, I would think so. I, th I still think it's crazy that that church steeple or whatever it is is, is plated in gold. I told you, should have just taken a hammer and gone hiking. Oh, they, they don't have vandalism issues. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's there's cameras everywhere. I'm still amazed. Northeastern Alabama and the mountainous forests of northwest Georgia is an expansive 100-mile-long gold-rich area known as the Dahlonega Gold Belt. Since 1829, nearly $1 billion of gold has come out of this region that few outsiders know about. But don't worry, there's an estimated $2 billion worth yet to be found. Kind of excited I'm in the mountains. I'm in a brand new area. Dahlonega was one of the first gold rushes in America. Starting in the north, the Chesapeake River flows for 32 miles right through the belt. And I've been told even the most greenhorn of miners are scoring here. And I want to show you where and how to get some southern gold of your own. These mountains are actually Dummy. quite large for... Well, you probably should have paused it anyway. We have mountains like this in this rural forested area. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Dave? Hey, who's First that up, person? That I've got a tip on rookie miners, Aaron and Jeff who've secured access to a 100-foot stretch of this gold-rich river. Do you want to see some of the gold that I've got here in Georgia in the past? See what we got. All right. All right. The gold in Georgia is super tiny. Okay. I mean, there is a... Yes, there's tiny gold. There's also very big gold. High well... Concentration of very yeah. small gold. Yeah. And so the skills, practicing to pan that stuff out yeah. um, is a challenge. But it's a challenge that seems to be paying off. My goodness. How much you got, Jeff? I've got 13 grams of gold here. Oh, my goodness. That Woo. is nice. That's some beautiful gold. At 23 carats, the gold here is some of the purest on the planet, which can mean up to 350. So they didn't really say anything about, like, how long it took them to get that, and I do believe yeah. that is... If that was a half ounce for rookie, it might have been less than that because I think he's up to a half ounce or more now. That's his like two year total so far. Well, but that wasn't. Well, what did uh, the other guy say? It was thirteen grams. Yeah, and, and that's under a half ounce. I think they combined okay. the total together for eight hundred there. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is this isn't like this is a day's worth of digging for them. This is. Oh There's yeah, man, substantial. Because I know, I know, Air Aaron. He primarily pans and sluices. Yep. And it's he's up to I think a little over a half ounce in two years of prospecting. And I mean, we yeah. did we did our that uh, last live stream we did there. We were we out. Yahula. Yeah. yeah, we were panning with him in his in one of his creek river. Creeks. That was a creek, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a big creek. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and I mean, you see the kind of gold that you get there. I mean, it's... Yeah. Take you forever to get a half an ounce. Yes, an ounce. it's taken him quite a long time, but he's out there every weekend, usually both days, I think. Yeah, and I mean... Um, but for him, it's more of it's more of the adventure. It sounds like it's, it's more the adventure, of, and he's doing it a lot for... He's more so interested in the stuff with YouTube for it. Yeah. And the adventure of finding it. Yeah, he's it's not, not sold a spec, so. Yeah, he's in. You know, he's he's talking about he's going to give some away here soon too. Yeah, yeah, something. But uh, just to clarify that 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 amount of gold that they're showing Dave there is not from a day or a week or a month. That's from a substantial amount of time. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Well, and uh, so to clarify that. So something. Uh, 
I can't remember who's one of us had brought it up when we were talking about him being on the show there is we were worried that they're going to like show that gold and be like, oh, yeah, this is what he got from shoveling for one day. So I like that they Aaron did. was worried about that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm worried about how they're going to portray that. Now, they weren't specific, but they weren't like this is what they're going to do. They didn't. So it, it is what it is. Also, rookie, get better at uh, panning down that uh, fine stuff there. Yeah, you, got, you got a ton of black sand in there. We call yeah, it uh, ridiculous, buddy. Well, we are well enough into the video, so my buddies call them Magnafucks. <laughs> you got to get well, rid of had, And what was that, uh, the white sand that's in there that we had a problem with? So there's the silvery stuff that's under a lot yeah. of it. I do, I believe, is generally zircon. And then there can be larger white pieces, which I think are either... They could be barite, or they could be... Sh I don't know how to say it. So whatever, she she light, Shayla, she light. That's a Shayla there. <laughs> it's one of those probably. Those <laughs> both kind of range higher and can be white minerals and yeah. But like when we were panning down that gold, like if we were doing it right, that we got to that white on. stuff. Okay, that was, that was the so, silver work on you. Yeah. And that stuff was a nightmare. I hated that. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. I'm picking on him, but <laughs> I'm not picking on him because that stuff is painful. And, you know, it took me a couple couple go-throughs to, to get mine out. <laughs> and I think I still had a couple of there, so whatever. $50 per ounce more than other regions. And mining in shallow running sections of rivers like this one, it's one of the easiest ways for you to get it. This is actually my Lilo spot. I live a couple of houses down the road. Some of the best gold is actually down here, but most of the Chesity River is considered private property. I mean, it's kind of good we're on private property because the rules are a lot more lax. Yeah. So here we can use a sluice box, but if you're on public land, none of yeah, that. It's just that. pans and shovels only. Hmm. You've got to check the laws and get permission to go into the river. The best way to do it, though, is if you find a landowner who doesn't mind you prospecting in his land, Go for it. That's tell me what's going on here. You so, guys. anytime they bring that up, we've got to mention that that's a great idea. You, that's a good thing. Yes, and you have know, to know the laws. Georgia is different in their laws than the Carolinas, than Virginia, than Alabama. I don't know what Alabamas are. Each state is going to be different. In Virginia. That waterway that they're st they're standing in, if that was Virginia or North Carolina, they'd be in public ground, on public ground, and, and open to walk up and down wherever they want. The adjacent property owners do not own the bed of the river in Virginia and Carolinas and stuff. And I'm assuming with the width of the creek there that it's got enough of a flow basin or whatever... That you can dredge on it too, if it were Virginia, yes. If it were Virginia, yeah. But yeah, like he's saying there, like he's like, woohoo, I can sluice. Like, yeah, I'm like, woohoo, I can bring a four in here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I can bring a four inch in here then. And if so, the thing is, is like for other states, like the Carolinas and Virginia, if it's a park, it's you're pretty much a no go across the board, panning, sluicing, any of it. But the public waterways are treated differently than that, and the rules are different. So even from parks to national parks to national forests to state parks, county parks, and then just public rivers, which aren't administered by any park, all the, the rules are different in every single one. Yeah. And just because you're allowed to do it, you have to use common sense because you might, like, it might not be a good idea. Yeah, you don't want to piss people off. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't want to go a spot a river in front of somebody's house that are having a 4th of July picnic and you're being loud and yeah, no. and they don't yeah. want you there. Like, you be like, well, well I'm allowed to. There, but yeah, because you don't want to ruin it for everybody else, too. Yeah. See, you got a bunch of rocks over here. Are those your tailings? Yeah, yeah sir. We've been, we've been washing some rocks today. Uh, you see how close the bedrock is. Heavy gold collects with gravels and sand on the impenetrable bedrock layer, making it a great place to hunt. Impenetrable. 
Are you guys been digging right in here? We're digging yeah. right out here. We, we're just looking for low spots. Yeah, we flip them boulders, get down to that really good sticky clay. Have you gone, like, on the back side of this? Uh, I haven't tried that yet, no. no. I think it gets kind of deep. See the way this is all kind of rolling over? Oh, yeah. Like, if you get a lot of water, you know, some of it's going to go that way, but that gold's going to want to find a spot to fall out. Here, they call me Digger Dave. The way the textbook says, check on the backside of Riffle. But, you know, from practical experience, I look up most. <laughs> I'm sorry. There it comes. <laughs> no, it's just kind of funny. They, he's, he just says they call him Digger Dave. And then they literally show him put a scoop of water in the yeah. <laughs> Like, what is that? Like, I know you have horrible scoops sometimes. But really, like, right after he says that, and then that's the clip you put in there? Um, <laughs> oh, Digger Dave, here's a scoop of, like, three pebbles and water. Well, then again, that is – hold on. That is exposed bedrock. It, it, it can be extremely hard to dig. I'm just saying, I, it, it's not any it, knock. On I know, it's just, it's just funny. funny. It's like, you could have literally pulled a shovel full any other spot in the river, just cut that in there to make yeah. it look like a real shovel. He's like, look at me, I'm a real digger. I got three pebbles in here. <laughs> it's like something like this. The Lonega gold forms in quartz veins deep in hard rock. As the rock erodes... The gold. It's not just in the quartz veins. It will also be in the country rocks surrounding those quartz veins. And some of the general gold trends there, well, they had quartz veins, the entire entire sections of country rock. So the, when I say uh, what, rock, uh, What's a country rock? When I say country rock, it's basically the bedrock that is surrounding. It's just bedrock. Now, so I'm, like the lines on the picture there? Like the... The yes. dash lines. Okay. So the the bedrock surrounding these veins and stuff also holds gold. Okay. So they're Not showing they're it. Themselves. Well, I mean, I guess I guess that like middle line kind of shows it because it's going up that quartz vein, but it's not on the the black line itself. But I'm saying not. <clears throat> I'm saying there's gold. Not it's in the bedrock around the quartz veins, not just in the quartz vein. But. So it's still going to be close, though. Is it going to be like a foot away? Is it going to be 10 foot away? I mean, there were some of the documented stuff in, in the Dahlonega the Gold Belt there. Like, it was the entire formation 30, 40 feet thick. They would remove the whole thing and wash it because there was gold throughout. Huh. There's quartz stringers throughout everything, too. But there was low-grade gold throughout the red bedrock surrounding it as well. Okay. So it's not just in the quartz veins. Now, generally, the quartz veins are going to be richer, and the stuff in the, the in the material surrounding the quartz veins might be lower grade. But it's it, it, some of that stuff was documented to have gold throughout. So, and the the reason the quartz veins are there is because there were weak points in the what you call it, the the country rock or host rock or whatever. Basically, <coughs> probably yeah, something along those lines. So, like mag, uh, super is it... fluid, super heated fluids, not okay. mag, super heated fluids basically, and then as those then the material to produce the quartz vein and all the stuff in it precipitated out of that superheated fluid because if it's superheated and under pressure it can be super saturated with various minerals and elements and all that type of stuff okay okay so it's it's not lava that's coming up through there it's yeah. like a geyser pushing it's it up or not a geyser necessarily either i mean we could be when these form they could have been 10 miles under the surface of the earth so why would that not be magma it wasn't magma. Now, it's probably related to magma because the magma is providing the heat source for superheated fluids, but it itself is not magma. Okay, so is there a general consensus base, or that geologists believe uh, whatever the heated stuff was? like, Or is it just all hypothesis? The problem is, is there's many different types of of gold deposits and they don't all follow the same models okay so when we're uh, talking about this one was this magma I'm, I'm talking very no this is not magma i is want it, magma matt is it related to magma or some sort of 
heat source, yes, but the veins themselves are not magma. They are a superheated fluid, water. They're superheated water that's super saturated with minerals and elements and everything else. Okay, like salt water? No. Like that has salt in it? I mean, it's talking like you're talking about it has minerals in it. It, it has. It, so when you put under something under great heat and pressure, it can absorb a, or not absorb, dissolve a whole lot more. And we're talking pressures and temperatures that are above or temperatures that are above boiling point. But they're not able to boil due to pressure. Okay. So that's why they can hold a bunch of these things. And that's why gold, which is generally not soluble, becomes soluble under certain temperatures and pressure ranges. Okay. So that being said, would gold break up in that solution? Because you'd mentioned in the last video. Gold it was work. in the solution, literally in the solution. And then you had something happen. This is the current, some of the current stuff going on with this is that, so then maybe there was an earthquake and all of a sudden you have a mass pressure release. And then all of a sudden it all drops out of suspension almost instantaneously and forms a vein. Okay. With all these minerals and stuff that boom, just drop out of solution because it was superheated. So the water just goes, then goes from under pressure above boiling point, no pressure, pressure boils off, gone minerals left okay so nuggets would they be forming via that method so like they would resettle on themselves to make a nugget or it would be floating in the suspension as a nugget it's not floating no when i say uh, they're it's dissolved gold in that fluid okay so so if it was like that earthquake thing like whatever so, would fall on this one spot would form a nugget yes Maybe. I uh, Now, getting into the specifics of stuff like that, I am not 100% up on any of that. Well, I want to know everything, Matthew. I am not. I'm not sure if they 100% know, because I think also they think some of these veins take many, many uh, iterations of that type of thing to form. So it's not just like one thing forms the entire vein. It's superheated fluid, no pressure, minerals, and then it, it keeps repeating that process. Okay. <clears throat> Something along those lines. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Tangent. Nerd! <laughs> Gold is carried into rivers and streams. In the river current, rocks create a natural vortex, slowing the flow down and trapping heavy gold on the downstream side of the rock. But in my experience, the water also slows down on the upstream side, giving the gold another chance to fall. So, in my experience, <laughs> that doesn't apply currently to the southeast. No? Not currently. <clears throat> 10,000 plus years ago, yes. Now, no. So, what the, that's the thing, is when you're interacting with bedrock like that, yes, you still want to do that and dig behind the ripples and stuff because you don't know how the water was flowing thousands or millions of years ago but nowadays like if there's a big boulder up on top of other material like i don't care about digging behind it there's usually okay so, fly <clears throat> okay so you're talking about like a current boulder like a boulder fell in a river last year yeah no okay gotcha <clears throat> now like i said the bedrock the bedrock's been bedrock, and it's been yeah. there for a long time. So that's different with the interaction of bedrock. But with, like, just big boulders sitting on top that could have fallen down or gotten there whenever re more recently, I don't know. I don't dig behind those. Well, really. I, mean, <clears throat> it, I mean, what about, like, fine flow gold? Sure, but it's never in a quantity that's worth digging. Gotcha. And this is where also the inside the inside bend stuff comes into play too, is where I don't I have not found inside bends to be worth anything in the southeast. Interesting. Now the bedrock under an inside bend might be. And the bedrock in the outside bend might be, but one's easier to dig to than the other because the one's buried more. But that is a bedrock issue, not a 
inside outside bend issue. Well, that would be an overburden issue, wouldn't it? More or less, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. When you're mining rocky spots on the river, dig all around. The gold could be everywhere. Let's dig some rock. I agree. I it, agree. Right? I agree with that advice. You should be <clears throat> indiscriminately sampling. That looks like a better shovel. Yes. <laughs> you, should be, you should be indiscriminately sampling because it has it can be in weird places that you wouldn't think it would be, but it is there for a reason. Because it's not just where you find it; it's where it's. And then you would end up doing a hundred samples in just this big creek right here. I mean, it's wide enough. How many samples would you do across it? Hopefully, we dig. I mean, when I go to a place like that, so I'm just gonna start panning everywhere. Like, I'm not really gonna. If I, it depends on if I'm like specifically setting up a sample plan or not. Okay. okay. Shovel pull got worse. Yeah, it's still pretty light shovel. Got some nuggets. <laughs> That's my hope. That would be nice. All right, let's see what this primo material Dave got us has got. Yeah, even down here it's doing well. You're retaining some of the heavies. Looking good. Aaron and Jeff are using a simple $300 river sluice. The gold mixed with gravels and sand is fed through the top of the sluice. Is that Aaron too much? The of the river water. <laughs> Huh? That that seems like a lot of flow compared to what you do in the dredge. Does it matter as much for the stream or <clears throat> I don't think it's I don't think that's more flow than what's going through the dredge. I don't know, it kinda looked like it. Um, <clears throat> oh. The heavy gold naturally drops to the bottom where it's caught with other heavy particles in the groove map. I don't think it is now. I think it is. I it's think water. water. Maybe, I guess. Like, it's not going to move a four-inch rock through there. Well, I'm talking, like, when you're doing the Latrap cleanups. Well, that's like, different, too, because the Latrap <laughs> cleanup is a cleanup, not a production. Okay. You right. could run the Latrap like this, and you'd want it faster to clear big rocks. But when we're running it for cleanup, we're running it for cleanup, not for yeah. moving big rocks. Well, and, like... I mean, when I did it in Colorado, I was trying to mimic the cleanup, which would probably explain why I had so much to pan through afterwards, too. Possibly, but. yeah, that little trap I don't like. So. Plus, you never let me use it before, so I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Figure it out. Watch a YouTube video. And the lighter, worthless material washes back into the river. This sluice method has barely changed in almost 200 years. But I think there's always room for a little improvement. Why don't you guys put in a little pump? You get a little more consistent water. You can set your sluice box. Always wanted to. What you got set up, it's right. great, but you lose a little bit of control. Yeah. But if you've got a pump, you can change your pitch, and you know exactly how much water's coming in. With this, you're kind of hit and miss, right? Yeah. Like right now, you could be flush and fine gold. Is he saying a pump? Yeah, he's saying to put like a header box on it and run a pump for your water flow. So, I mean, in this, what? But if you're only allowed a sluice there, wouldn't that mean they're on private property though? Well, can I? Well, yeah, you can dredge there then too. Yeah, so technically you probably could, depending on what the okay. property owner dictates. Well, um, okay, yeah. Like, for what they're doing to like bring a pump and a header box into, it, I don't think you're really adding much. You're just adding complexity and more shit to carry around. You're not really upping your production rate at that point. Um, it's still about as fast as you can probably shovel. Yeah. Um, so that, that piece of advice is kind of eh. Well, we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> Alright, here we go, boys. Hopefully there's gold in here, huh? There it is, Dave. What do you think? Nice. That's a good looking gold right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job, guys. Thanks a lot. That's 30 bucks from just a couple buckets of dirt. Add a pump, and you could make enough to cover rent each month. Once again, I don't just simply adding a pump and a header box to that sluice is not going to up your production by very much. 
I'm gonna say, you were, uh, well, because he, like, he even said, if you add the pump, then uh, he said something about the flow. You have more, you possibly more control over the flow. But, like, if you know how to set up a sluice correctly, like, what the... Mm, like, okay, so what? Like, you can also control the flow of the sluice if you know what yeah. you're doing. And if you're if you're running a 10-inch wide sluice, which is what they're running there, and you put a header box on and you shut... You, you're still limited to the same production capacity issues. It's not going to magically produce more gold for you. You're going to have fuel costs then, too. And noise. And all fuel, that. battery, something. So, so, like, yeah, in that case, like, I don't see adding any of that to be very helpful. So, and when he's talking to Pump, he's not talking that little Harbor Freight one that, you no, know, you just blew my mind with. To run a 10-inch stream sluice, like, yeah, you're talking either a small gas pump or a fairly substantial, you would need t probably 2,500 GPH at least. That's a big building pump. That's going to eat through batteries pretty fast. That's a 17 amp draw, amp hour draw, probably. Oh, okay. Um, for that size of bilge pump. Uh, so you need my camper to run it. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> gas pump wise, yeah, I mean, you're somewhere in the same range and stuff, but it's like. And also, given the size of that creek, you're also going to be. You're going to have to bring either a lot of hose, depending on where you want to set up, because it's not like you can just set the pump up in the middle of the creek. Yeah, um, it's got to be on shore and stuff. So you're going to limit your location somewhat. Sluices are also limited in location where the water's fast enough. But it's not like adding either an electric or gas pump is going to suddenly boost production magically. Like you're only able to run so many buckets in a day when you're hand digging. So would it <clears throat> would it be like you could have a bucket there in the stream with you? And because you're constantly digging in the hole until you fill the bucket up, like, it helps your hole to maintain. Like, because I, cause I know, like, when you dig and then you walk away for a minute and you come back, there's more sand on top of it. I mean, it's the same issue regardless, really. But if I'm, if I'm constantly digging for five minutes... Versus taking a shovel, going it's just, away you for get a minute. The whole more you're you're going to have loose stuff coming in, regardless of if you sit there for five minutes and dig or keep walking. You still have the same loose stuff coming in, just a perception of there not being as much. Okay. And it sounds like Rookie's trying to keep his overhead really low, too. Yeah, he doesn't want to be carrying much stuff around. Like I said, like, why... When you're still limited to the production of that sluice size, yeah, it can only handle so much, and you can only dig so many buckets in a day. Now, also, is that thirty dollars worth of gold right there? <laughs> well, then that to be almost a quarter gram. Uh, thirty dollars be half a gram. Um, yeah, because a gram's like sixty four, sixty five. Not like a that. half gram, no. Yeah. But that might not be the whole cleanup either, so. Don't know. It's been a great day. Yes, sir. Appreciate you coming. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, he's a great teacher. One of the things that he really taught me was using the outside and inside of the natural ripples. I think it's really going to be good to be able to use that on a day to day basis. This is my gym. It's great exercise. The river's peaceful. I might only make $6 to $10 of gold each time, but. Um, that's cheaper than most people's gym membership. I actually earn money. I really enjoy seeing young people out here doing it because that's young the next people. <laughs> I believe they've got enough energy, enough knowledge, enough wisdom. I don't know how old Dave is. He's got to be what? Uh, 50s? What? Mid 50s? Yeah. And I mean, Aaron's, was he 43, I think he said? I'm right in there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. <clears throat> Dude, I'm. Still one of the youngest people probably in the CVGP club or that I know who prospects. Like of the YouTube people and other and on the Facebook community of various stuff, I don't know many people younger than me who are deep into it. Oh well yeah, you're a little crazy too though, so Yeah, probably, yeah. Probably. <laughs> I can take it to the next level. 
if they want to. I think what they really ought to do is get a little pump, set it up so they can be more consistent. I think they'll find more gold. Well, they got themselves an amazing spot here because, you know, he knows the landowner. The landowner's like, yeah, come on down. So if you could find a piece of private land and the landowner say go, it's the best way to go here in Georgia. Coming Unless... Up, Joey, you ready to get some gold? Matt. Oh, Matt. Okay. Was he talking about having the pump for pumping out material? He's talking about for water. I just think for water, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm just trying to figure out how to make I mean, sense. We're not talking about dredging in any <clears throat> such way, no. Okay, all right. Which is what that is. Uh, Just a little bit, yeah. It's a keen six inch. Is it? All right. I'm going to show you how going deeper can get big gold quicker. Find some of that. The lot of good gold. Woo! No commercials. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Red dirt roads and somebody else mined it. That's what we're looking for. I'm in the mountains. There's three different mines that we're actively mining here. And we're going down into the creek right next to it. So that's a great sign. I'm in the Dahlonega Gold Belt, showing you some of the many places in the south you can find your own pot of gold. Oh, and I'm the a leprechaun. Everywhere. So pay attention. I've seen a lot of red dirt, which is mineralization. And there's white quartz sticking out right there. I'm seeing everything you want to see. I'm headed to a stretch of the Gold Ridge Etowah River in Aurora, just seven miles south of Dahlonega, the center of the regional gold rush. To show you that with a little investment, you can maximize your gold. We're going down into the creek, and I'm meeting a guy named Greg. He dredges. Kind of excited to see him. Hey, guys, what's going on? All right. A nice little dredge. Dredging on the weekend. It's a nice little dredge. Yeah. Uh, what's what's his wetsuit there? Because it's almost like it, the hood's attached to it. It may be. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, they have those. Okay. Yeah, they have hood, They have wetsuits like that. I mean, I guess yeah. I don't. I only wear it in the cold, so. Yeah. But no, that's a either a keen five inch or six inch dredge with wetsuit heaters and stuff on it. Oh, wetsuit heaters. It'd be nice if ours worked. Ours did work. Yeah. It you have the, the evidence shit out of me. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm interested to see because, yeah. Greg has found a great way to spend time with his son and <clears throat> boost his salary with gold. Ah. So the is I guess he lives there or he dredges there often. He's got a chain to a tree with a tarp over it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just a little bit. And he's got the kid going in there. I like how they call him. I don't I don't know the dude, but still, I just always find titles funny. Master Dredger. Ah. I don't even, I wouldn't call myself a Master Dredger. I mean, I'm obviously a Master Dredger. You're obvious. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Something well, I, like that. I, I doubt that, I doubt that guy <laughs> put that in there. I'm just saying that's something. Yeah. Different. Well, like, even uh, even the guys that do Bering Sea, there's the ones that were running the dredge up there, like, would they call themselves master dredgers? Oh, some of them 100% would, and some of them are idiots, but whatever. <laughs> some of them know what they're doing, but some of, it's, it's a TV show up there, definitely, 100%. Yeah. Dredge with Joey. I love it, man. Joey, you, you ready to get some gold? Let's go, guys! <laughs> we're dragging over the shoal, and then we're going to set up at the bottom. We'll dredge in the center. Probably we're dredge in the center below. Right. So we're going to work our way up. So that way we can just toss rocks behind us. We're in the Dahlonega Belt, and this river's been washing gold out of these mountains now for millions of years. It's an amazing spot on this river. You've got calm water, and then you've really got a little bit of a waterfall. It's a perfect storm for gold settling out. Gold is carried in the current, but when the river slows down, the gold drops onto the riverbed. 
This is a big dredge. I've never dredged. Yes, it does that. But but it may not have been any time recently. So what looks like may have maybe slow water now may have been fast water ten thousand years ago, and vice versa. Like you can't just oh it's big big thing of slow water. Like it doesn't necessarily mean gold has dropped out there or is dropping out there. But you also use that as a general rule yeah, of thumb. Yeah, you can, yes, but it's also not 100%. Because we see an eddy and say, hey, let's go dredge behind that eddy. Mainly because it's easier or... to set the dredge up there. Well, yeah, that too. And to dive. And then you work your sample out into the fast water, you'll come back into the slower water, all that type of stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. These are spots where to set the dredge up easier and make life easier on you, and then you swing the hose out into the faster water and all that. What? It was a six inch. A six inch in diameter moves a lot of material. This is the real deal right here. Yes, it does. Great setup costs $7,000, but you can get a smaller one starting at 2000 bucks. So it's you. I'm glad to see other people do the same stuff. That, that's you every damn time. You well, know, I got a hose that squirts water. Of course I'm going to squirt water. And you're like, somebody pay attention to me. Pretty much. Ooh, I like that. I do like that ledge and how that's set up like it, because that is most likely a quartz vein that's producing that hard piece of metal. That, I was going to say, I, I would like to dredge behind there. Yeah, I would too. Might not have anything, but you never yep. know. I like how hard packed the material is. Like, it's getting much tougher to break up. It's cemented in there. you got to really work those rocks out. All yeah, good stuff. means that it's been there for a while. Oh, yeah. Like most dredges, Greggs creates a powerful suction that vacuums gold and gravel from the riverbed up to the sluice where the gold is captured in ridges. There it comes. Go ahead, Matt. What are you, what are you about to say? I'm going to figure out how this diagram works. It don't make sense. <laughs> okay, so it's not just me. Oh. So the front <laughs> headers has to be their foot valve intake thing that they're showing. But Where? they got their, they're showing it as a suction nozzle, not a power jet, which that dredge is 100% a power jet, not a suction nozzle. Um, yeah, it's not a very good uh, representation <laughs> of how that current dredge, that they're, now are there dredges that, regardless of the orientation and how stuff is set up on the dredge? Yeah, it's just not a good representation. Well, I mean, that top hose is going behind the suction nozzle there. Like, in theory, I mean, yeah. would, would that work? Well, they're showing it as a suction nozzle, not a power jet. What do you mean? For the, the one that's going in on top of the suction nozzle? Yeah, it's a different style. It's the power jet's all the way out there at the nozzle. Yeah. They but what, like that, but it's still... It well, that's what I was asking is... No, 90 it, degrees don't work. I mean, if it was if it was angled, like let's say it was like 160 degrees, it should be coming in at the bend on the nozzle. Okay. Which shoots straight down the hose. Okay. But regardless of that, I'm not sure what's going on still. So. <laughs> <laughs> not a good drawing. But Greg has a secret weapon to give him an edge. The With blaster. A high pressure hose. So that's not even the foot valve. That's the blaster. Okay. Oh, a secret weapon. Okay. Oh, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a foot valve. <clears throat> oh, I knew it was a blaster. <laughs> but the secret weapon. Every dredger should be using a blaster. Yeah, this is why I'm the master dredger. I knew that was a blaster. It can loosen ancient gold-rich dirt that is wedged into cracks and crevices right into the suction hose. Or a bunch of shit material. Now, 
Let's see what we got. So I much bonds. How long they dredged for? Well, because like if you were there for twenty minutes, like whatever, just not worth it to clean out. But I, they, they may have been dredging all day. They just didn't really show or say anything about it. <laughs> How'd you get started doing this to begin with? When I was about 16, I used to buy dirt. And so I, in a bag kind of thing? In a bag. Yeah. Just there, there for concentrates, and I would uh, take them home and fan them out in the creek. When I turned 18, I joined the Army, and I left home, and all my belongings kind of traveled with my parents as they moved around over the years. After the Army, I got married about 13 years ago, and when I was going through my divorce 10 years ago, I needed to find something to do that was just for me. Everything I, I did was for him. I got a lot of respect for that, Greg. That's impressive, because it ain't easy. I've raised three kids, but I've raised them with a wife. To raise a son all by yourself, that's hard work. I got a lot of respect for single moms out there, too. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. I got a nice uh, 23 gram nugget a couple months ago. We were just on a cruise. That trip was basically supported by my gold mining habit. Well, that's yeah, cool. It worked out really good. This is your primary catch for your finds. Nick, why don't we find that nugget? I know, it's ridiculous. You never take me to the good spot. Where's our nugget at? <clears throat> well, he's maybe, probably... next, maybe next trip down to Georgia. There you go. Yep. And most of your fines are going to get caught down here. Okay. Ooh. This is my cleanup sluice. This is what I run my concentrates through. Greg is doing something I've never seen before. Powering his sluice with the motor on his dredge. Well, I've got a cleanup on a dredge. But a simple river sluice would work just as well. It is a simple river sluice. Yeah. What? It is. I'm trying to figure out how he's got the flap uh, held up there. The keen flaps are not heavy. They're a very lightweight rubber, and they're long, and you can just throw them up over the top, and they stay. Ah, uh, okay, so your yeah. dredge sucks. Got it. No. Pro lines have a heavy dampener. Keens do not. Up. That looks pretty good. Gold in there. Yeah, thick nice. stuff. You got the material. Nice. You know, I find fine gold all over North Georgia, but to find that nice big chunky stuff, you got to come to Delonta. How much gold do you think we got? Uh, there's over two grams. What do you think? I mean, you're looking at two to three grams an hour, maybe. It wouldn't take but a few days to have an ounce. Working like this every weekend for a year could haul in over $65,000. The Lonega Gold. I love it, man. No, yeah. uh, that spot yeah, looks beautiful. Gold. What a pair. <clears throat> to me, that was a perfect spot to go gold mining. And Greg knew it. There's still gold in Georgia. Later, Greg wants to show me a secret weapon that's getting him even bigger gold. But until then, we've got more to Lonega Gold to uncover. No, he definitely, he seems to know what he's doing. He's using the trap setup. But it's something I don't see many dredgers use. But it works, and that was, yeah, definitely some nice gold. It's interesting that he says you need to go to Dahlonega to find the uh, the big gold. So, yeah. And Aurora in that area. <laughs> so. Coming up. We don't know what lies we need. I'm going to show you that a gold mine, wow, that is impressive, could be right beneath your feet. The geology's changing. You can see some white rocks, and it looks like quartz. I'm in the heart of the Georgia section of the Dahlonega Gold Belt, home to America's forgotten gold rush. Beautiful part of the country. Legend has it that in 1849, on the balcony of this courthouse, in an attempt to stop miners leaving for California, the mayor shouted the famous line, There's gold in them thar hills. Hmm. And there's still gold to be found everywhere, if you know where to look. 
there's a lady here that wants to show me something. It relates to mining. So oh, we're going to go into uh, Ice Cream Sweet Shop see what we got. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. So nice to meet you finally in person. What's your name? Margaret. Hi, I'm Margaret. Margaret. And this is my husband, Jay. Hi, Jay. Jay. Nice to meet you. I don't normally come into the sweet shops looking for gold. But, uh, <laughs> you, you gave me a call and you said you have something unusual you want to show me? Yes. Indeed we do. <laughs> it's a hand dug shaft. Got it. Drops 30 something feet down. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't know what lines can eat. Let's go see what you got. Okay. This refrigerator. That doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to pull this out here. All right. Which way are we going? Straight ahead. Straight out. Okay. And we have a little door there. Wow. That is impressive. Whew. My goodness. Any chance we could grab that waterproof camera and drop it down? Right there you can see some of the holes. And those holes were probably there for building some type of a platform so they could continue to dig. To keep going down. They found gold here in 1828, and chances are this shaft is probably driven in there in the 1830s or 1840s so we're going to keep going down now if the geology is changing you can see some white rocks and it looks like quartz those look a lot more like river rocks to me but they shafted down to an ancient riverbed and where there's bigger rocks there's bigger gold and beer cans <laughs> Ghost. in my opinion i don't think it's a mine shaft you don't think so? Why? I think it's a well. <clears throat> well, especially because if they started getting down to something that looked cobbly, they would have dug in. And that's, they're not saying anything about anything shooting off. If it's just straight down. Yeah. And it's in the middle of the town there and it's an old building. Like, I wonder what the dates of the building are and stuff. I mean, yes, gold was 100% found right in the middle of the lawn ago. Yeah. But that still strikes me more so as a well. But yeah, I mean, so all he's talked about was there's the little holes off to the side, and he said it was probably for, like, supporting your weight so you can get up and down like a ladder or whatever. Sure. But you still dig a well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and but if yeah, there's... if there's if they would have found anything that was evidence of gold being there, they would have dug into went it into the, the side or various things like that yeah if it just went straight down to the water and it looked like the water was only a couple feet deep and stopped that that's probably a well yeah i can't say for sure but it seems like a well. to show you folks if you live in an old gold rush town check your basement gold could literally be under your feet too and but my question is why is it underneath of a building any idea well, mining was prohibited on the square. It always was and still is. So probably they were digging the shaft in private, in secret. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks for showing me. Those <laughs> old people found a way to get their hands on the gold no matter what. But over 150 years later, a family is proving they left plenty behind. Next, I'm off to the North Georgia Forest on the outskirts of Lincolnton. So he's just and hanging out the whole time. Historic gold. Huh? He's just doing Dahlonega the whole time then. I mean, he's not in Dahlonega anymore, doesn't seem like. Well, I mean, the Dahlonega gold whatever belt, belt yeah. he's calling it, yeah. <clears throat> Where is he at right now? Well, he's still in Georgia. He's still in Georgia, yeah. I just said Crawford something. I don't know. There's, I mean, there's a lot of gold areas in Georgia, so. Mines. So we're here to see a father-son operation. They're out here prospecting. I've heard. Uh, really have a that's a suction nozzle. Yeah, and that's a small <laughs> suction hose. Two and a half inch or three inch thread, yeah. I hate them. The machinery to double down on the gold on this five-acre claim. It's not a claim. <laughs> there's, no, there's no claims in Georgia. It's either property they own or it's property they have permission for. Yep. There's no claims in Georgia. Hello, hello. Hey, good to hey, see you. Nice to meet you. 
Nice to meet you. Dude. You Tim? I'm Tim. What do you got going here, Tim? Now, normally I see in a dredge, like, your sluice is on pontoon. I kind of like this. It's kind of like a hybrid, isn't it? Correct. This is a uh, high banker dredge combo. Yep. Where we can do both. Tim and Bailey mine both the stream and the ground around it at the same time. While Tim operates the dredge that sucks up gold-rich river gravels, Bailey loads river bank dirt straight into an attached hopper. Ugh. I'm not big on doing all the shoveling. That's a lot of work. For my son, Bailey... Sounds like Nick. I know. I was literally just groaning about it. Like, I... I hate digging and shovels work. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> but then I wouldn't be happy on a two and a half either, so... Yeah, I can't tell if it's... A, it might be a three inch, but yeah. <laughs> ah, it's... It's no six. It's not Sandman. You're not going to get a used Sandman probably again this year, so... I know. He's the one that likes to shovel. The hopper is a pre-wash system that washes and separates out the bigger rocks, allowing the smaller dirt and the gold to be caught in the sluice mats. So, Tim, how much money you got tied up in all this? Well, I've got approximately about $3,500 in invested in it with the uh, the unit itself and the engine. But an entry-level system will set you back just $1,500. So you can get started with $15 and a gold pan. You know, you don't have to spend $3,000 to get going. So you can get out in nature and get some good gold. See, I've dream map. We hit a what we call a. Yeah, he's using dream map. Yeah, I thought I saw that. There. I don't necessarily hate it for classified <laughs> systems, and that's a classified system. No, I it's mean classified to at least under half inch. So I think it's probably perfectly fine for that. I just don't like it in big dredges. Blue gray clay layer. Oh yeah. That's just decomposed bedrock that's turned into clay. That gold will never penetrate that. So he's skimming all the rocks off right down to that bedrock. There it is, Matt. <laughs> now, I mean, sure. It, but bedrock used to have, when it was more solid, had cracks in it. Gold could have migrated into those cracks, and then as it decomposed... It got smoothed over. That's why, I mean, I usually take the upper six inches of decomposed bedrock a lot of times. Well, or if you can see, obviously they're in mud soup dredging by Braille, which I'm quite familiar with. Uh, but if you can see, you'll dig into it a bit and try and reopen some of those cracks and see if there is gold. If you're seeing more gold, then you keep going. So now I also wonder if he's talking, because he pointed to the middle of it. And so I think he's talking like it's clay, and you know clay is kind of malleable. I think he's saying like gold won't go inside of it like like a donut. But what if it where was a crack in that? Well, that but since where he's soft now, it's sealed over and sealed up. Oh, does that happen? Why not? I don't know. I don't know how clay works. I'm not a geologist. Pretty much, yes. <clears throat> Is that bedrock decomposes and gets soft, the cracks may disappear because it just kind of mushes together then. But I'm assuming there's still be a weak point in there when you pick up that clay, it's going to break that, that, yeah, that weak point. Yeah. So. And that's where your gold will be set. I'd say this is the perfect two person setup. That's the first time I've seen somebody double teaming, high banking, and dredging at the same time. So they're Ugh. maximizing their sleuth time. I really like it. I definitely think there's a lot of gold. I think you got to be careful with, like, I've done that, but I think you got to be careful and make sure, like, as you're going to dump a bucket into the high banker. You're not overloading it. That the guy on the nozzle isn't, like, hitting the pay layer and hitting the richest stuff at the same oh, time. Oh, yeah. And over then you're overloading it or various things. So I, it, it works, but I do think you need to be coordinating and careful so you need a six inch neck down to four with the high banker on it do you want to maneuver a six inch hose <laughs> in water that like that where it's exposed 
Like, it's hard enough to wrangle that thing in water where it's lighter. Yeah. And it still pushes me around something. And I do not want to dredge this area at all. Left in Georgia. It shows that these mines were active up until the 50s, 60s, and then they just walked away from it. So you know that there is gold still in here. You just have to find it. What are you looking where you for? find it. I'm kind of looking in the bank to see if there's like a little gravel layer. A lot of times people think plaster is only in the stream bed, okay. but it's not. Plaster could be a. What did we find on top of a mountain when we were down in Georgia? <laughs> Yep, on top. Uh, how high up were we? A couple hundred probably foot? Three or four hundred feet, probably above the river. <laughs> yep, and literally shovelfuls on top of it, next to the road that was dug in. Gravel was... stream gravel. <laughs> yep. On, on top of the mountain slash hill, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. And can... no, plaster is not just in the river. Yep, and it contained gold. Yep. So. Here. As that, you know, millions of years ago, that river ran right there, okay. and then everything falls down on top, buries yeah. it. Well, it's got river gravels on those benches. Do you ever test pan stuff? I would suggest you just pan it. Because if you consistently pan the same size pan, and you run three or four pans, you're not getting anything, let's move to another spot. That makes sense. Yeah. You're not doing that? Yeah. Regular test panning <laughs> will allow Bailey to hone in on the richest gold spots. Leg work that will no doubt help dad. Three yeah. years ago, my wife took me down to the hospital and they uh, come out and say, hey, Tim, you're having uh, a heart attack. So quadruple bypass. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Back to 100%. Good for you. My advice to you is be patient with us old codgers. Yes. Because when I was your age, I wasn't that patient with my dad. And I regret it at times. I really do. My dad's passed away. I appreciate Take the time it. and yeah. appreciate what you have yeah. when you have it. <coughs> You're happy with that? I'm happy. Well, if we don't find anything, it's your fault. <laughs> <we're cleaning> it <laughs> there you go. To separate the gold from the worthless. I wanted to see some of the test pans, but okay. I know, right? Well... And uh, all that guy needs to do is eat a little cayenne pepper. He'll be good. <laughs> and Willie. <laughs> Willie. <laughs> uh, the bucket's loose. Sam, these guys have got another neat piece of kit. How much this little setup worth? It's about $85, and that's it. You Run can... off of a uh, little pump. And, you can uh... buy this pump at your local hardware store. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Turn on the water right there and get a little. Oh, look at that! Kind of cute. Oh, it's like the it's like the gutter sluice. Will slow down into his bucket so he's not losing it's anything. Slow, yeah. But and smaller. The in the little riffles. And we can do this at home, you know, out on our back deck. Turn down the. Uh, I used to have bit. one. I just don't want to wash it out. That looks a little bit better. The right water flow is important. Too fast. And it washes gold off slow the end. Or uneven or too something. Too slow, and there's not enough flow to wash out all the worthless dirt. That's the quickest cleanup I think I've ever done. Exactly. Wow, that was pretty slick. Dave's got the magic touch right there. You know, well, the tap and... I, you don't know how many times I've done this. Oh, that's pretty good, you guys. I think they're in a good spot. I really like the fact that, you know, Tim is using this operation with his son as rehabilitation. It's pretty cool that he's out here and come on let's see it let's see it there you go with this type of operation you could haul in a thousand dollars a weekend i gotta say you guys got a good thing going i like hanging out with you know dads and sons <laughs> that get along because it's still think we're slightly overestimating the gold but that's always hard to say i'm pretty bad at that too i think so too but also with his valuations when he's talking about how much you make in a weekend so it sounds like he's spending an hour with everybody on the show. Yeah, it, I mean, it sounds like it just kind of depends. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, I mean, even with the uh, the dredgers, it sounded like they are running about an hour. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I don't know. It, it kind of seems like the go-to. Which uh, Didn't uh, Rookie say something about that, too? Yeah. 
which makes me when if they when they decide to potentially do Virginia and other places like gonna be care if 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 they were to talk to us or anything gonna be careful with where we go because we don't want to spend three hours getting to the spot. Yeah, stuff like that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other thing is like. Uh, he's just driving up to these spots for the most part. It's really yeah. nice. And then, you know, we go motoring six miles down a river. <laughs> but it, the show may like that, too, because it does add a lot of good footage. A lot yeah. of good potential for a lot of stuff. But It's like, well, we might just spend an hour with these guys, and we spent all day with them because yeah. we were stuck. <laughs> oh, exactly. Thank good you. pleasure. Thank all right. Coming up, I show you how scaling up doesn't have to break the bank. That loud noise, it's like a money machine. I see me. I'm in America's deep south, in the Dahlonega Gold Belt. A 100 mile, little known stretch of golden promised land. Now, I'm heading out of Georgia towards Lineville, Alabama. Alabama? Where I found a one-stop shop for gold hunters to hone their skills and make some money. Jeff, I'm Dave. Good to meet you. You got some gold down there? I hope so. We're looking for it. Jeff Landrum owns and manages Alabama Gold Camp where over 600 members have access to its 200-acre claim. Ah. So you're digging. Yeah, never been there. I know people go there, but, yeah. Okay. So, so this is it's a club that would have a claim. It's a pay-to-play location, I believe, more so. They may have – there may be a club component, but I also believe it's a pay-to-play location. Okay. So it's not like um, uh, what's the one here in Virginia? CVGP. I think it may have a club component, particularly for like local people and stuff. But you think right. it's more of like a tourist attraction kind of thing? They do that too, but then it's also like if other prospectors from anywhere want to go there, you can just do a daily rate or whatever. Okay. Like okay. I mean, I don't hate that daily rate thing too. Like it's it's nice to once in a while just be like okay i'm gonna go to the spot i know that there's something and i have to pay to go but i think you would end up disappointed in most cases nick oh well, you gotta realize it especially if you're dredging in their places like they're getting hammered that's a good point too. it's gonna be hard to find ground that hasn't been hammered no is there yes but it's gonna take a lot of time to find stuff like that so no so. Can pay out for for the people that are up here high banking, and we're running for that and our problem operation. You mind if I get down in the hole and see what your pay looks like? Go ahead, man. No, don't do it. Don't do it. That's where you find the Indian burial ground. Contact zone where Poltergeist. <laughs> that you got clay bedrock. That gold falls down in there. It's rotten. It's exactly what I always look for. Changes in the color of the ground like this can indicate high mineralization and gold. So always be on the lookout when you prospect a new area. How did you start all this? I was uh, doing a little prospecting about 20 miles from here to Goldville. And uh, I lived next door to a church. Preacher knew what I was into. And somebody in this church was getting a divorce. And they wanted to know they don't know anybody would be interested in buying a gold mine. And that was the start of how much you charge people for being here? You can come in and spend a day. Uh, pans, sluice, and metal tape, five dollars. What? Five dollars. Five dollars cheap. I got a lot of people that come here and before they leave, they hug you neck and tell you they love you. And that, that means a lot. Here, members can sluice or dredge and keep the gold that they find. No equipment costs and no need for permits. It's as cheap as playing the lottery with better odds of a good payout. Hmm. Well, Jeff, I got a golden pan. This is the first Alabama gold I've ever seen. That's pretty good. So let's go throw some dirt. Back in an excavator. Okay, so Matt. In a while. 
All right, so now how do you feel about the pay-to-play there? Five bucks. That's for a pan, sluice, or metal detector. That's not for running a high bank or a dredge or anything. I thought he said dredge in there, which I don't, I don't know. know where he's running a dredge, but... They're, they have they have creek somewhere around there, too, I do know. I'm pretty sure he said dredge. Mm -mm. Pretty no? sure he did not. Boy, if only there was a way to find out. I'm going to rewind that. You're <laughs> called on me, aren't you? Yep. I will call you out. I mean, five bucks is a what? cheap day. Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. That might have been too far. Uh, yep. uh, Leave it. Oldville. And uh, I lived next door to a church. Pretty knew what I was into. And somebody in his church was getting a divorce. And they wanted to know they don't know anybody would be interested in buying a gold mine. And that was the start of it. How much you charge people for being here? You can come in and spend the day, uh, pans, sluice, and metal tape, $5. What? $5. $5. Told cheap. you. I told you he didn't say it. Want to leave that hug your neck and tell you they love you. That, that means a lot. Here, members can sluice or dredge and keep the gold that they find. Members. So I don't know no what equipment means, costs or... and no need for permits. It's as cheap as playing the lottery with better odds of a good payout. Hmm. Well, Jeff, I got a golden pan. This is the first Alabama gold I've ever seen. That's pretty good. So let's go throw some dirt. Back in an excavator. Feels good. Been a while. Jeff's been digging this site for 20 years. All to feed the beast. Good looking pay right there. A massive, self assembled gold catching monster. What do you call this now? We call it Goldzilla. Goldzilla. Yeah. Why did you get that name? I don't have a good answer for that. It come about. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes. Put some material now. Let's get there. So that's just all washing down? It is. But mostly we use these, this hose and that fire nozzle where people can be involved in, in operation. That's what it's for. Okay. It's for the people who prospect here, and they get to run it, and they get to keep it going. Nice. They so do. they all get to split it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We all split it. Where'd you buy this thing from? I acquired several different pieces of old mine equipment. And just took one day, I just started putting them together down here. Got a piece here and a piece there. Piece here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Johnny Cash song yep. about yep. that. <laughs> one piece at a time. Oh, you're the young guy, so you get to toss the rocks. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Jeff, you ready to fire this up? Ready, man. All right, let's go. Matt. So what is this thing called? They call it Goldzilla. Okay, so Matt, this isn't a dredge. It's a trommel. Trommel? Okay, so it's just, just a like huge trommel. at the beginning. At the beginning? the very beginning of this episode where they showed that one trommel? Oh, this one? No, it wasn't this one. Oh, I don't know. It was a trommel, <laughs> wasn't this one. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> Goldzilla. It's a shaker. huge rock washing machine. The shaker all washer. The gold hidden in the dirt. Trommel. Yep. The dirt is loaded into the plant where jets of water break it down. In the giant spinning trommel, the rocks are washed clean and discarded off the end. And the smaller material and gold pass into the sluice where it's caught. Hey, Matt. Hey, the monster. And Did you like that diagram? That diagram actually somewhat made sense. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Trommels make excellent wash plants, whatever their size. And with a little bit of ingenuity, you could build your own for just 50 bucks. I love that. This is exactly the background I came from. Shakers, screens, excavators, dump trucks. I love the pan, but this makes me feel at home. That loud noise, it's like a money machine. Four hours of running later, in Jeff's gold room, only the smallest and heaviest material is left. Tiny rocks, black sand, and gold. So this is his finishing table. It shakes. 
And as the water yeah, washes down, down the light particles go down yeah, here. Okay, the gold and the stay. heavy stay up here. You can kind of see how it's staying in here. And then they'll go into these trays. And then down here is this bucket. So he's not losing anything. Anything that spills over, he's still catching in there. It's going to take a while. George is living proof that you don't have to spend big to get some Alabama gold. My gold I found. I thought he said Georgia. <laughs> proof. I'm like, what? I think he meant George. Sorry. <laughs> It's uh so they're in Alabama right now. Do you know much about Alabama gold? It's a continuation of the same stuff that's in Georgia. Okay, so it should be relatively comparable to what you sh could see up there. More or less, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a continuation of that belt. All right. Is Virginia a continuation of anything, or? I mean, some. I mean, they're all semi kind of related ish. Um. But the Alabama, Georgia, and then it goes up into like Western North Carolina, Central. That's kind of all one. And then from North Carolina, there's kind of a Central North Carolina belt. There's a Western Cent. There's a Western Carolina belt. There's a Central, and there's an Eastern belt. And then there's kind of a discontinuous section, kind of in Northern North Carolina southern virginia and then you pick up the virginia gold pyrite belt okay but there's some discontinu there's there's it's discontinuous in between in places and stuff D does it go up into maryland or yeah it goes into maryland and kind of peters out right in maryland okay no pennsylvania right in the the Potomac, pretty much no not in philadelphia no <laughs> Over the course of the last year. Oh, that's awesome. There's gold in Alabama. I don't yes. know if you knew that. I so, do now. That's pretty nice, though. Now, if you've hit a big spot, right, you pulled 10 ounces of gold, then you're going to quit mining? No. I quit work. And got <laughs> mining gold. <cool. laughs> Jeff's run the finer material through his gold table. So let's see what we got. That's it, Jeff. It looks pretty good to me, man. I think you got half an ounce there. Pretty close to it. That's a good run. Yeah. Woo! Clean gold. I really appreciate you having us out. Get to see your operation. We can pull half an ounce in it is whatever special. a day or whatever they ran. It's great yeah, to have We run yeah. about yeah. Four, for that. four hours. I'm going to thank with somewhere but half an ounce. So it's a little pretty good run. Jeff's got a great program going here. He's got a great wash plant. So he charges them five bucks. And everybody can come out here and have a good time, find some gold, you know, pay a little bit of the gas bill and a little bit of the food bill. It's a beautiful spot. Hmm. Coming up, I like it. I show you how to go big on a backyard budget. What the hell we got going here? This looks like a, a hood. Yep, that's my old garden tractor there. It's off a garden tractor, and these are the wheels. Yep. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> it's, don't it's don't give all the secrets away. away. What? I said, don't give all the secrets away in that little. It's, it's literally a lawnmower attached to it. To it's, it. it's just an upside down lawnmower without a deck. <laughs> it just moves out. I, I don't know who would build that first, you or Bob. I feel like he would do something like that. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Hey, we were just there. What? We were, we were just there. Is that the uh, the place that had the uh, like the llama or whatever you got the monkey? The donkey or whatever for Declan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kristen Goldmine and Mill has been here since 1847. I'm going back in time to see some 19th century gold engineering in action. A stamp mill was the original way to crush ore. So this would be the first time I see one that's actually running and functioning. It's actually the only one of two that still operates in the United States. Duh. Uh, I was going to say, there's some Humphrey spirals right there and there's a stamp mill. So here's so, your ore, and what you'd Matt. have to do is pre-split it. So you say that, I got a picture of the Humphrey spiral back there because I, I saw it. I thought it was like a mini putt-putt back there. 
So what is what is it that they have going on? That they're not using the Humphrey spiral there. Well, I know it. It was literally stand like it. It looked like a mini Wait, golf. Only- yeah, right a- there. Yeah. Oh, is this like a museum kind of thing or something? Or they have they have a lot of mining equipment there and stuff. Yeah, that I don't think to use anymore. Okay, I legit thought it was a mini golf. <laughs> spiral. And I, I saw that I was like, "That's a Humphrey spiral." I'm like, "That's that thing Matt wants to 3D print there." So I got a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna ever be able to 3D design and 3D print one because the newest ones that have the highest gold capture rate currently, they have a. I'm pretty sure they're all patented for one. Uh. Which then the stuff that talks about them says there's a variable geometry within the spiral, and I'm like, how the hell do I? How do I design that and get the variable geometry right and how that's working? Like I have no idea. Yeah, it's not that hard. I don't know what the variabilities are, though. You substitute the C for the X squared, and you're good. Okay, yeah, sure, definitely. Uh huh. <laughs> One of two that still operates in the United States. So here's your ore, and what you'd have to do is pre-split it because really all the ore's going in here, so it has to be a certain size. We can't really uh... use oil or grease because that makes gold float. Molasses. One. Interesting. Wait, what? That's apparently, they use molasses to lubricate the parts. Because oil makes gold float. It increases the surface tension of water. Oh, okay. All right. So they're using molasses, which is interesting. <laughs> That's know that. good to know you can do that. Also, this sounds like my biggest nightmare. It's making my shoulder hurt right now. <laughs> just, to have to just smash just rocks. Think about, it's like, your job is to smash rocks all day. Man, I would be jacked. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of power. That's gold. The Lonica belt still has a lot of gold in it. It's pretty cool. To me, that's amazing. Wait, so that place has an active mine there? Yeah. Oh, why didn't you... You can still go underground and stuff. There, the store that we went to. In the back area, yes. So, could we have gone when we were there? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It was also, what was that, a Friday? So, I'm not sure. They might only do stuff on weekends like that, of tours and all that. Okay, well, we'll have to look into that for the next time we go down, because I would like to go see that. I think you can do it at the Consolidated Mine, too, which is right by the Walmart. Okay. So. Hi, me. <laughs> if you're like most Americans, you probably didn't know there's gold for the taking here in the South. But the Dahlonega Belt is rich in gold, and I'm showing you where and how everyday people are getting it. Dahlonega Gold. I love it, man. Now I'm heading back to the Etowa River where Dredger Greg wants to show us how to scale up on a backyard budget. He's got a small truck. This is the same Greg, right? It, this is the Dredger one, I yeah, think. Yeah, the Dredger, okay. So he's, yeah, he's running a trauma and other stuff too then. Kind of excited to see him. Greg's so he's crazy like you. Dry land. Huh? I said he's crazy like you. So he owns the property there, which is cool. Definitely. And he's got a brand new operation with son Joey and friend Brad Tom. What we're going to show you now is a lot bigger. You've got bigger equipment, bigger trommel. I don't tell everybody to go out and buy this equipment to start out. This is a step up. A little bit. Just just a wee little bit. Use yellow iron they already own. But you can rent your own for as little as 500 bucks a day. Yeah, don't, don't rent your own equipment. Yeah, don't do this. This is like don't rent equipment because you might as well. If you're going to be doing something, you might as well just buy it because then when you don't want it, you can turn around and sell it a lot of times for almost what you bought it for, and just be out the fuel bill. If if you buy it used, yeah. You buy it used, yeah. Yeah, but and you definitely don't want to just go jumping in like, oh, I got land. Let me buy a bunch of shit here and. <laughs> nah, we're just buying eight. What are you talking about? We're fine. Yeah, I know, right? Build a runway. Just make sure you're qualified to use it. 
qualified. There's no. What do you need to be a forklift off forklift operator? Um, when I was in the Marines and we were on that uh, naval ship, I had to get certified being a forklift operator. For, 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 that's why I'm joking. With forklift stuff, <laughs> you usually need to be certified, yes. But for other stuff like that, no. I, I mean, it's a good idea to be trained on that stuff. Like, at least have an idea. Cause... Sure, but also if you're out in the middle of the woods like that, you know what your best training is? Get on it and start using it. Because generally, what are you going to end up hurting with it? not much take out some trees accidentally well don't, or don't start right near a giant mud puddle or something you're gonna get stuck in but, have, you know. have you met some of these millennials they're gonna kill somebody pretty easily oh, that's a, uh, work in progress like, is there a beach now. ball under it what the hell we got that looks like an exercise ball yeah, that's what i mean yeah <laughs> it's off a garden tractor and these are the wheels yep yeah. You gotta be kidding me! Just missing the deck and the front wheels. I'm not gonna say it's hillbilly, but I'm gonna say it's country engineering, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, you guys. I gotta ask you, what'd you use for a feeder here? Well, it's your uh, old school satellite dish. No way! No. Is this the old satellite dish that you just made into a feeder? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Very Something soon. temporary. That's there. Some backyard engineer. I got one on my roof. You can have. I mean, he's talking one of those big ones, but I mean, they used to be prevalent, and now they're just probably garbage in a lot of people's backyards. So. I know, right? I I think mine's like three foot. So yours is tiny. That he's that's a. I mean, you look at that's like a quarter piece of it. Like I think it was six foot in diameter. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure you and I are not going to build anything this big either. If you want it, you can take it off my roof. I've literally worked with stuff about that size. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> Decent for what it is. You ready to fire it up? Let's go. Do it. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty damn good, you guys. Trommel's going. I like it. Oh, this is smooth. Got water. Just like Goldzilla. This trommel is a huge washing machine that separates gold from the rocks and dirt. Water from the pre-wash helps the pay dirt on its way. Big rocks are dumped out the end and the smallest material drops through a screen and into a gold catching sluice. Hey Matt, how much gold comes out the back of that? Shouldn't be much. Like, what if you drop like an eight-pound nugget in there? Would it come out that the back? Would come out, yes. Anything oversized that's not going to fit through the screen just going to get spat out the back, including okay. specimen pieces. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the downsides of trommels, and that's also why they say Alaska highways are paved in gold because the big drag line dredges and other stuff that they then use the the gravel from. Had the same issue. There were trommels in them. They spit the gra They spit over anything over. A lot of times, half inch to an inch. Oh, would get okay. Spit out. So there's literally nuggets in Alaska's highways. <laughs> That's Virginia funny. probably too, because at the Bertha and Edith mine, they used a drag line and a trommel, and they sold the screened oversized gravel to whatever v dot predecessor was at the time what's a drag line Just like a old school excavator okay steam steam powered excavator where it had to drop the bucket with and then drug it back with cables and stuff oh so not like a you sit in it kind of thing no more like yeah, you sit in it but it's more like a crane it has got a big crane boom and then it drops the bucket down, and then it has another one that pulls it and then lifts it back up, and yeah. Okay. If you ever go to Field Days of the Past in Virginia, they have it there. I have no idea what or where that is, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's a chance there's nuggets in Virginia roads somewhere, too. Really? Okay. Yep. I'm going to start digging yep. up my road. With specimen pieces and nuggets, yes, we get shot out the back. That's why it would be good practice for them, especially with the amount of material they're moving for like every hour maybe, to like metal detector tailings. 
mm. coming out the back. Now, do they do that? Probably not. I mean, that would just be, it'd slow everything down a good bit, but I don't know. Yeah. So. These guys really know what they're doing. I mean, they're on to gold. Um, you start getting big chunks of rounded quartz. They got a makeshift log plant, but I feel like they know where the gold is. Thing I would do is move this down, and it gives you a little more sluice box because you're not even you're just, you're missing that much. You're, just, you're missing six inches of your sluice box. The more sluice you got, the better off you are. See how the water? It was flowing pretty fast off and shooting down, and it makes like a rooster tail, and it's blowing this area yeah, out. A piece of here, I'll show you. Sure. Is this somebody's shirt that they want? It's Brad's. You're good. I'm just gonna give you an idea. It's Nick's. What whatever. Okay. Yep. Put a piece of belt, something that's flexible, and just put it like right there. See how it calms it? Gotcha. Same, same principle as the heavy dampeners on the dredging stuff. Yeah. We're just modifying. We're just putting a damper on the sluice box. It's got a little bit of turbulent water. You put that belt on there, and it'll just knock it down a little bit, and uh, it calms the water, gives the gold a chance to settle out. Rocking and rolling. Four hours later, it's time to see if Greg's country engineer trommel and we actually got a time on how long they went for. What, what do you say there? Four hours. Four hours later. Okay, and that's what he did at the other one too, the pay to play. Okay. It was four hours, yeah. So it sounds like these smaller operations they're doing about an hour, and then these ridiculous yeah. operations are four. Yeah. My modifications have paid off. Oh, yes. Off all day. you, buddy. And of course, <laughs> all the gold is there now because we put one dampener on there. Yep. He's like, oh, they usually only get an ounce a day, but now we got 42 ounces. It's all my fault. <laughs> right, let's go ahead and see what the cleanup looks like. Hold on now. What the hell is that? Gold there, boys. Is that gold? Yep. So they're finding specimen pieces. Interesting. It not take much to just get those having to get shot out the backside. Yep. Which, if, if, if so, if you were seeing those in there, I would be much more like, okay, we need to metal, we need to spread the tailings out and metal detect them. Uh, there's a good chance you're losing specimen pieces. Well, and if they're looking in the sluice right now, I mean, could you pan it or what? Would you pan it the sluice or uh, the the tailings out of the sluice? No, I'm not talking about sluice tailings. I'm talking about the tra the oversized trommel tailings. Oh okay. well, I mean, would you want to do it the sluice tailings too though? Yeah. But it just depends. I'd be more interested in the bigger stuff that might have just got no chance gotcha. of getting captured by anything because it's just getting screened. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Is that gold nice. sitting in nice. that rock? It's six or seven pieces. Like it is, pieces. right? That's awesome. Uh, but it's not just sitting on it, right? It's part of the rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's in it for sure. I think that thing's full of gold, isn't it? They're right at the source of this gold seen a lot of nuggets but i've never seen gold sticking to the parent rocks and it's pretty special this is the lanaga gold belt gold they say it's 95 to 98 percent pure that's amazing hold on brad what is that right there it Mike? is it looks like a little picker that's a picker right there that a picker that's probably the biggest piece we found maybe i'm good right luck here. Maybe. I'll take it. <laughs> You're coming back tomorrow, right? <laughs> like, call I'm, not, me down. I'm not sure what their value was. Like, was it more than what he just... But that picker was not worth $325. I was going to say, that... But I'm not sure if they were valuing in the specimen piece or anything else in there. That picker wasn't $325. So that was like a three to four grain picker. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. These numbers don't make sense. Wait, what's gold at right now? <laughs> Slightly below two. Okay. Been hovering just below two two thousand an ounce right now. But the show was filmed. This is last summer, probably. And it was it? Well, 
what what was the height of it here? It was like twenty two hundred recently. Yeah, it hit twenty two hundred. I mean, still, it's not going to move it that much. Yeah. It has maximized his sluice and increased the chance of catching gold. There was a lot of gold come out of the Delonica belt, and there's still gold left for the future. Hopefully, the miners I've met along the way have inspired you, like they have me. Go, Dad! This region has flown under the radar, but gold and southern hospitality is alive and well. You guys got a good thing going. And if you decide to come try your luck here, who knows? There could be a pot of gold waiting for you at the end of the Delonica Rainbow. <laughs> Since I last saw them, oh, the updates! We have been hot spotting the river. Well, we've taken a lot of your tips. As you can see, the test panning has proved successful. We'll definitely be coming back with the dredge. Jeff and Aaron have powered up. Well, we got the pump, Dave suggested. And now we've got the perfect water flow. And we've been digging in the spot, Dave recommended. Now we're on the gold, so thanks, thanks Dave. Dave. And Greg and Joey have upped their ounces. We've gone ahead and implemented the changes that you recommended on the trommel. This is a total season. That's almost $16,000. Good job, guys. Now it's on to another backyard. The part with Aaron was a little painful. I know, right? That's... It looked like a couple teenage girls on the tickety talks. <laughs> well, yeah, we followed your advice. We're digging right here, of course. And oh now God. we're on the gold. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, Aaron. That was a little painful. <laughs> sorry. you. <laughs> oh, man, that guy crashed me up. But, yeah, that, uh, man... That gold they showed there at the end, that was the uh, the father-son duo, right? Yeah, I mean, that's probably... For, I don't know if that's from their dredging and traveling operation. My guess is it would be. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. They did do both. That's pretty good. But, I mean, I, w I wouldn't hate 16 grand. So, he says 16 grand, so it's probably closer to 10. But, uh... I mean, that looked like... It, it did look pretty it damn good. It looked like more than five ounces, potentially, so I don't know. Yeah. But, nah, uh, good episode. Yeah, L I a little corny, it. and the I mean, it sounds like the valuations look a little iffy, wonky. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why they seem so far off. It's also sometimes hard to estimate stuff, but it is. I mean, well, and you and I play this game all the time. We're like, okay, how much is that? How much you're is like, it? Not what I thought it was. And you're like, that's like. Two grams. I'm like, it's a half a gram, Matt. <laughs> Yay. Um, but no, that was cool seeing Georgia, especially since we were just down there. Yeah. Uh, not getting and, that much. I gold. mean, the pro like, so while we may have not done great, that property has so much potential still. Oh my God, yes. There's so much of it too. So like, yeah, it's just gonna take time. And we would have had a chance to test a little bit more out if that tree wasn't down and we weren't lazy. That tree worried <laughs> me because there wasn't, and we were, somebody would have had to been floating with the dredge. Yeah. Um, and you would have had to stop the dredge and we would have had to bring the chainsaw to cut the tree. That was the fastest part of water. We would have had to go over there and chainsaw stuff out of the way first. Yeah. So, um, but still, regardless. No, it was a good show. Uh, we'll see what, uh, you, I know there's a third. You said you thought you saw. I a I saw a fourth three. one, yeah. So, but I don't know. Um, so they still need to do the Carolinas. So that's going to be probably the third. I think is going to be south, north, and South Carolina. Yeah, because they're Georgia and Alabama. What did they do uh, the last episode? Was all California? Yeah, that was all California. Okay. And I know, I know, I, so I haven't met a number of the people who are going to be in the North and South Carolina, but, like, I interact with them plenty on Facebook and other things. So that okay. way you can see them out there. See how they're um, doing, yeah. Yeah. See how they portray all that stuff and what they show. Uh, yeah, you know, I we... Know. I, enjoy it. I make fun of stuff, but it's like... 
Yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I know. We should have had Rookie on really so he could have made fun of him to his face. <laughs> like the, the updates. Those updates are kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about those, but okay. <laughs> well, I, I like the idea of the updates to see how everything's going, but man, it sounded like all of them were kissing his ass. Yes. That's very much what it sounded like. So, I mean, whatever. I mean, if if somebody gives me good advice and it pays off, like, yeah, I'll give you all the credit you deserve. Yes. I also <laughs> don't agree with some of the advice and stuff. That'd be my problem. Well, but that's why I said if it pays off, so. Well, the part of the thing is, is like, I am, as much as I don't like saying it, I am the more so an expert in especially the geological side of some of this stuff oh boy here he goes not i don't like saying that because i'm not I'm not a master i'm not i'm always learning all the time always learning keep blowing air in that five head of yours no i'm always <laughs> learning um um but i mean like when rookie was out with us i didn't see that pump no but I mean, where would he have used it to? There wasn't any needed place. Yeah. So if that, that pump wouldn't even if that pump's going to slow you down because that's not even that's less water flow than what the river would provide, and you would have to then. It kind of yeah, it kind of looked like it. Yeah. It wasn't so. like an eight hundred and fifty gph. Um, so. The river would be a better source to push more bigger rocks, have more production, and rookies even said this that. Well, classifying classifying will get you finer gold. He's done. He's done literally the fairly good testing of classifying versus just shoveling it through, and he did a good test of it. I'll have to try and find the video again. He got more gold just straight up shoveling and not waste, not spending the time to classify. Got well, that, and he did say that he hates classifiers. So yeah, yeah. And with that 850 GPH pump on a 10 inch sluice, there you'd have to classify. You're not going to be able to just shovel into it. Yeah. So, while you may lose a little more fine gold just shoveling straight in, your increased production makes up for it and overcomes it, and you get more gold. So, time and place for everything. Yep. Yeah. But as far as show goes, I mean, I'm yeah, still cool liking it. I'm I'm seeing stuff that I haven't seen before too, which is different between you and me. Yeah. So, because I don't, if I've been around a trauma, I don't. What was that? Uh, what was that loud ass shaky thing that you? Uh... That's not a trauma. Okay. <laughs> that was I didn't like that. It was a. Um vibrating screen basically i yeah that was loud i didn't like that that was loud you needed earplugs i mean it's like the pre-wash to the trommels though okay the eventual plan was to use something like that as a pre-wash to a trommel okay i was gonna say i don't think i've seen a trommel so uh the big giant piece of heavy metal sitting in your backyard is a hopper for a trommel <laughs> no it's not it's a place that I throw beer cans in in a bonfire. <laughs> I mean, you're not hurting it, I'm pretty sure, but uh, I do need to get it back to Barry. I need to get back to Barry. Yeah, not not damaged at all. I get some hot fires. Yeah, it's it's pretty burnt. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think it's a good show still so far. There's definitely some stuff that makes me laugh and makes me be like, yeah, I don't think that's right. Um but uh, that it's going to be for anything. You're going to have stuff like that. So uh, overall, though, I think it's a positive thing showing small scale prospecting and mining in a good light. Yes, and showing that you can. And they do keep on reiterating the fact that you need to get permission and check the yeah, laws, like stuff like that. So. Yeah. And you really can't emphasize that enough is what it is. Yeah. Like, honestly, we should be doing that a lot more in our videos, too. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I can start throwing that in somewhere. But, yeah. 
Like, overall, still liking the show. Yep. And then, and then Rookie did the after action report there. <laughs> Shit, what was it? Uh, shovel, big shovel Dave or something or whatever. Then they oh, yeah. Like, like, that tiny, that tiny shovel. Yeah. It's like, man, that looked like one of my shovels. <laughs> Just funny shit. I don't know. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's what it's there for. It's not. It's a show not made for specifically for prospectors. It's made for somebody starting out or somebody yeah, thinking about your starting out. audience. Yeah, and I like that they're bouncing around the country so you can see different areas and be like, oh, I didn't realize Alabama has gold, so. Yeah. But, yep. Overall, I think it was a great episode. Um, I look forward to doing the next one. Do you know where the next one is? Carolina, I'm pretty sure. Okay, alright. So, it would be exciting to see that because I only know a little bit about Carolina gold. Yep, and we either have to cut this in the shorts or see well, if it actually makes it on YouTube. Yeah. So, 